I remembered. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fine Tune Friday. Uh, hope, hopefully everyone's having a, a good day and had a good week. Uh, my name is Mike Wong, Director of Career Services. My colleagues are online here. We got Becca Smouse and we have Nicole Ashton. Say hello to them. Uh, today we are looking to fine tune your professional wardrobe. And we have an expert on hand. Uh, obviously I can't do it. You can see how I dress. Uh, but we have an expert uh, on hand and her name's Naomi Ellis. And let me just give her a brief intro. And uh, Naomi is an ASU alum. ASU alumna, associate professor at ASU in the School of Art and Design, Fashion Design. Now, I looked at the courses that she has taught or she teaches, and she has, uh, she has taught survey of the fashion industry, uh, social aspects of fashion, and this is my favorite, personal style and wardrobe. So I'm looking forward to uh, hearing from her. Uh, she has a master's degree in fashion production from Philadelphia University. So Naomi, thanks for being here. Good morning. I'm so excited to talk to you guys about fashion and what to wear. It is a challenge for everyone. And so I just want to simplify it and give you just some tips and some guidance on what to wear in an interview and what to wear in a workplace and um, just in general, things that are going to help you not only in the workplace, but just, you know, all the time, kind of fine tuning your wardrobe just a little bit. So just real quick. And so you probably already know um, how how um, what you wear can affect your confidence and how people are already perceiving you. It makes such a difference when you look good, you feel good, you're more confident and you seem more reliable and trustworthy and responsible um, in the workplace. So the, just the overall basics are what to wear. Are definitely think about not just what you're wearing, but how you're wearing it. So I always remind students on the first day of class, even if you're wearing a garbage bag, if you've got your shoulders back, if you've got your chin up and your head held high and you've got great posture, you're gonna make it look fantastic. So simple things like that make such a difference. Just your overall presentation of yourself beyond what you actually have on. And then no matter what, this was for everything from your interview attire or um, what you're wearing on a daily basis, make sure your clothes fit you properly. If you see wrinkles, that is the biggest indicator that something doesn't fit. If you have pulley wrinkles that are kind of coming across, that's telling you that it's too small. And if you kind of have those drapey wrinkles, it's too big. And I'll, I'm gonna show you some pictures in a minute, but that's the number one indicator that what you're wearing isn't fitting you properly. You also wanna think about your foundation garments, that's what you're wearing underneath, and then your hair and your hygiene. Um, no matter what, always go with quality and fit over trends. You want clothes that are going to last you a long time. You want to look like you are um, timeless. And that doesn't mean hopping on every trend bandwagon. You want to just look poised. And that means fit and quality are going to win out over everything else. So I just wanted to show you this quick example so you can see they, they seem kind of like, oh, they look a little bit, you know, they look professional, they're wearing the suits, but neither one of these two people actually are wearing suits that fit them. They're both too big. You can see the bunchiness. His uh, cuff is too long um, on his jacket. It's too far over. Hers is slouchy, both in the skirt and in the jacket. So really looking for those wrinkles makes such a difference in making sure that everything is fitting you properly. Okay, so this is one of those areas that everybody misses. It's not what you're wearing on the outside, but what you're wearing on the inside. Um, for gentlemen specifically, you wanna wear a nude undershirt. That's not the same thing as a t-shirt. A t-shirt, it's gonna fit really loose around the arm versus an undershirt is going to fit snugly, so you're not going to see um, at all on the outside. This is generally one of those huge mistakes men make is thinking, oh, I have a white t-shirt. It's the same. It's not. You want to wear an undershirt that's as close to your skin color as possible. A nude or a gray work really well. 
And then um, definitely socks are something that people just don't talk about. Like, oh, what socks are you going to wear? But socks can really be uh, super important, especially in those in-person interviews, of course. They're a great way to kind of show a little bit of flair, but not overdo it. So choosing a really fun sock can make you look like you've got a lot of personality, but you're not too flashy about it. For women, um, when in doubt, put on a camisole underneath. It helps when you, you, you want to cover lines, you want to make sure your undergarments aren't showing. And also just if you get nervous and you get a little bit sweaty, that slip can really do so much. So just really take the consideration for what you're wearing under as a foundation as well. Okay, so hair. Um, overall, the biggest rule is keep it clean and keep it tidy, keep it out of your face so it's not covering you when you're talking and, and kind of putting this barrier between yourself and the, the interviewer. Um, if for gentlemen, definitely pull it back. For women in person interviews, I generally uh, suggest to pull it back, but for a Zoom interview, you may want to reconsider how it's framing your face in the shot because it's different, you know, pulled back on a Zoom, you get so much face, right, that you kind of feel like it's overwhelming. So having some hair helps. And remember, no one's going to see the back. If it's a Zoom interview, you can kind of do like a half pull up, which gives you a little bit more depth in your hair, kind of changes all the rules. Um, but no matter what, clean, tidy, and make sure your color and your cut are up to date. No one wants to see like long, misshapen roots and grow out. It makes it look like you're not keeping up responsibly. And of course, keep your nails clean and manicured. Okay, so um, in the interview, the business attire, for the most part, you want to wear a proper business suit. That's a matching suit where the top and the bottom are the same. They went together, you bought them together, they're part of the set. Um, there are exceptions. Um, if you're, it's a very casual job, if it's a highly creative position, the best way to know that is to look at the corporate culture. You guys probably already know that when you're looking for a job, you want to research the companies that you're interviewing with. You're doing that when you're writing the cover letter. You're doing that when you're editing your resume. You also want to do that when you're deciding what to wear. If you're going to work for like a Google and it's very creative, they're probably not going to want you to be as formal. But if you're going for a job at a news station, they're definitely going to want that other layer of, of formality. Um, regardless, it's always better to go on the side of question and be a little bit more overdressed because you can always take the blazer off if you get there and it feels too formal. Just take it off and have it on your arm. Um, if it's summer and it's hot, you just have the blazer on your arm. That way you have the formality, but you're kind of adjusting in case it ends up feeling more casual. So um, more specifically for men, you want to wear darker colors, grays and blacks. For a, um, an interview in general, you want to use angular straight lines. They give you this total feeling of being more um, rigid, more responsible, um, more strength, more reliable than curvy lines. I know it seems crazy, but it actually does make a difference. So you want to kind of have that in your suit and in the lines of what you're wearing. You want to do a long sleeve shirt tucked in, a lighter color so you get the nice contrast between your jacket and your top. Um, your belt and your shoe should match. And this is a rule for all suit wearing opportunities. The width of your tie and the width of your lapel should match. So if you have a skinny tie, skinny lapel, wide lapel, wide tie, those things should always be um, um, complementing each other. Okay, that's just a rule for all the time. And when you're choosing a suit, just always go with the best quality you can afford. No matter what, and I'm gonna reiterate this a bunch of times, having a really great suit for both men and women is one of those staple things that makes such a good investment. They don't go out of style. They last forever and you will wear it. If it's not in the workplace, you will wear it, guaranteed. Okay, for women, you wanna kind of go with that same thing of having the matching blazer and skirt or pants. Um, again, darker colors, 
think about your skin tone and how you can bring it out. If you are more of a cooler tone, you may want to go with more of a blue or a navy. If you have more of that um, warmer tone, you may want to go with maybe a brown or a black or a gray. Um, skirts should always be knee length. Too short can kind of look a little bit, um, you know, iffy and too long can look a little bit frumpy. So knee length is really the best bet. Make sure your pants are tailored, your blouse to match. So I'm going to tell you, everyone always wants to know how they can like bring their personality and not feel like they're run down by looking so rigid and formal. A blouse is that one item that you can have that brings out that personality and then you match it with a really classic looking suit. So then you have that balance of fashion, but still um, responsible looking suit. Definitely wear sleeves. Even more important when you're on the Zoom meeting because you see like the shoulders are dominating the screen. So you really want to have sleeves, appropriate neckline. Don't do sheer. And again, just tuck it in. Um, two and a half inch heels are considered like the greatest height for women to look good and professional. There's you know, like a, a bunch of stuff actually backs that up. So that's the best standard height shoe to wear. Closed toed and matching. Um, nylons. So I think we're kind of at a time where most people do not wear nylons for any reason whatsoever, unless you're applying for a job in some a super formal industry like a law firm. And then nylons are definitely one of those must haves. Otherwise, for the most part, no, no one really does nylons anymore. Okay, accessories, makeup, and jewelry. So hair, like I said, keep it simple, keep it clean. Um, pull it back if you need to. Don't do a ton of accessories. For makeup, go more for natural looking makeup. Sometimes when you have the super over the top contour, it can make you appear younger and um, less confident than when you just have more of that simple, more natural look. Uh, and then avoid anything that's going to be distracting, like really heavy, shiny lip gloss or really clumpy mascara. Um, also, watch out for overly gaudy accessories. Just go with more simple stuff. And um, I mean, I'm not saying hide all your tattoos and piercings but just don't pay them up. If you've got one, you know, on your arm, just wear a long sleeve just so that it's not dominating the interview. So here's just some really great examples of great suits to wear to an interview. You can see just the black suit and here they've got really great shoes and really cute tops. Um, the, the suits all fit really well. Everyone just looks nice and clean and polished, but they don't look stuffy. They all still look really fashionable and there's that nice balance there. So the don'ts, do not do any of these things. Do not wear a hat or a huge headband or headwear unless it's religious. Um, make sure that everything fits. Don't wear things that are too long or too short or heavy makeup. Um, not too much jewelry, nothing with graphics, and don't over perfume yourself where it gets overwhelming. So I wanted to put these pictures in here because I think all of these ladies look totally gorgeous and trendy, but none of these really feel very interview appropriate. They're all going to be distracting, especially in a Zoom, but definitely in person as well. So it's better for the interview to have more of this streamlined look. And then once you have the job, then I always say, ease it in. You know, you love your crazy shoes. I love my crazy shoes, but I ease it in. I don't do it on the, on the interview. You know, maybe in week two, once I've become more accustomed to the corporate culture, then I can kind of see it. All right, you know, now I'm ready to let my hair down and, and show everything. And so, which gets us to this point about showing your fashion personality. You guys all want to be able to show the creativity and how you're different, how you're special, especially in the Zoom interviews where you want to stand out. So I always say just pick one thing, keep everything else subtle and a little bit muted, and then do that one thing that's going to help you stand out. So maybe it's the jacket, maybe it's the blouse. Everything else is very simple, matchy, matchy, and then that one item. Maybe you have like a more interesting button up shirt, and then your tie and your jacket are both gray and more muted tones. 
So just pick one thing, let that one thing be your pop item and then balance it out with having everything else be much more subtle. So in the casual interview, the easiest thing to do up is to just take the jacket off. That way you still have the nice top, all of the other rules apply, but you then you just look a little bit less um, dressed up. So still keep the buttoned up shirt, um, still keep the blouse and maybe go with slats instead of the heels so you just look a little bit more casual, but um, you still look like you're ready to be in a workplace. So just some things, the creative industries versus the more traditional, like I said, nylons, if you're in that super old school, conservative, traditional workplace, those still can be really important. Otherwise, no. Um, piercings, tattoos, and unnatural hair colors, you know, when I was your age, they were definitely no-nos, but now it's not a big thing at all, especially in a more creative industry. So just look at the corporate culture um, and that's going to give you a, a really good idea on whether or not it's going to be okay in the interview. And then again, once you have the job, you just ease it in a little bit, right? So what about business casual? So this is once you're there and you're working, then you can do the suit separates where you're doing the mixing and the matching, uh, more of the casual dress, um, but you still want to avoid things like spaghetti straps or over plunging necklines. For gentlemen, again, with the separates, more of the unconstructed jackets with less of the padding and the tailored fit, more of a more casual jacket look. Um, nice loafers or chukas, the tie becomes more optional, and graphic tops. So graphic tees have been too casual. If you have one that, I mean, there's like this very fine line where the graphic top is just a graphic and it's not a brand, then those are becoming more acceptable in the workplace. So the casual Friday look, um, jeans are okay. They weren't now, but now they definitely are. A nice summer dress, but still just continue to avoid the spaghetti straps or the low net lines. And then just the collared shirt with jeans looks really good. Or I am always a huge fan of Henley shirts for men. I feel like the, the polos, um, you know, kind of Side out a little bit, so having a nice Henley looks professional, but still very casual at the same time. So Zoom which changes everything. I don't know if you guys have read articles or been practicing on Zoom, how things look, but um, in for the Zooms, for all of your Zoom meetings, you want to remember to use the mute button and uh, look at the camera. Um, you want to put your laptop up or your computer monitor up and then frame it down on your face. You wanna make sure that you have really great light focusing on your face. And then you can also adjust in Zoom. If you haven't tried it, they have a bunch of settings to help you enhance the brightness on your face. I think there's one that even puts lipstick and mustache on. I don't know if I would do that for the interview, but it's definitely a fun thing to try out. Uh, make sure you have your notifications off. Uh, good internet connection, and you look professional. What I really recommend is getting in front, having a fake Zoom meeting with yourself, looking at your makeup, or you're looking at your hair, or looking at yourself just from here up, right? And framing yourself in the shot. That you, What you think looks good in person does not necessarily look good on Zoom. It doesn't translate. So you can look absolutely fantastic and then sit in front of the computer and you're like, what happened? So you definitely want to look in front of the zoom lens before the meeting starts on your own account and then if you're in a meeting um once you know you're in the workplace or with colleagues make sure that you remember to introduce everyone and welcome people keep your video on even when you're not talking just have it on mute and then don't eat um and uh, make sure that you're the last one to leave So again, like I was saying, you want to practice, watch for shadows on your face, framing your camera, smile, don't cross your arms, don't fidget, because the fidgeting will look like you're swaying all over the place, much more even than in person. 
to uh, adjusting your attire, again, focus much more on this area right here. Try to avoid a pattern that's going to be super busy and distract from um, you and your face. Um, solid white or solid black can balance you out. Also look at your background to make sure that it's complementing you as well. And again, if you want to do that statement item, a jewelry item can look really great. Just make sure it's not overwhelming you on the screen. And if you wear glasses, make sure that they're not also reflecting and that they're clean because you will see that on the camera. So hair and makeup are totally different when it comes to Zoom. You probably all have been noticing that. So um, you want to make sure that it's again out of your face. Like I was saying at the beginning, sometimes if you just do like a half up, then it gives a little bit more depth. Look at your accessories really carefully. And then for makeup, again, don't overly contour. But I will say that I have found that adding a significant amount of additional blush and bronzer because when you have the filter on and all the light it will wash your face out a little bit and so I end up putting on so much more but differently it's not contoured so much it's just more about making sure that I have that brightness and that's why there's actually been this huge trend momentum about blush and um, putting blush as eyeshadow so that way you have kind of that um, video depth and you're looking more awake and bright eyed. So um, the best thing to do is get on the Zoom and put your makeup on there. Even if it looks funny in person, it may look great on Zoom. So make sure that you are looking at what it's going to look like in the virtual interview and not in person. And then lastly, just some trends to keep up on. Um, like I said before, a well-fitting black suit has been fashionable for a hundred years, starting with Louis Vuitton's Le Smoking jacket and suit. And now today, I mean, it still looks good. So for men and women, having a well-fitting black suit is just the must-have item for all eternity. Um, vintage is a great way to save money and then also look really sustainable and look really trendy and kind of have that all in one package. So you can save a lot by not buying new, but then um, also look really great because you, um, you got something that was awesome and vintage. Other top trends, uh, double breasted blazers have been really trending for women. Leather and long wrap coats have also been really trending for ladies for this winter season coming up. And then for men, a lot of layers. So having like an undershirt with a sweater and a jacket, um, more deconstructed blazers, so it's taking those shoulder pads out. And then like I was saying, trying to find that sophisticated looking graphic tee, which can be a challenge, but if you find that right one, that's definitely one of those on-trend looks. So that's all for me. And now I'm ready for questions. What questions do you guys have? Um, hi, uh, I know you had mentioned um, more suit attire for interviews specifically, um, but I was wondering what your thoughts on dresses were for an interview. I think dresses can be difficult because they can make you look so much more casual. So if it's a very formal looking little black dress, it can work, but you really want to be able to have that blazer on. So if it can match and it pairs all together, then yes. Otherwise, dresses, it's just can be a little bit um, difficult. So it's something that you may want to wait for the, um, the after work party or for the work day. Naomi, let's talk budget. I mean, we're college students, you know, budgets are tight. What tips do you have for shopping on a budget, looking professional, but, but doing it in a way that's not going to break the bank? So my best thing to do is shop vintage and consignment. The consignment shops, even here around the Valley, are so fantastic, and you can get so many great suits for so much less. Um, just shopping around and making sure that you're really focused on fit. Don't worry so much about 
if it's super trendy or if it's brand new, consignment is definitely going to be the way to go. And then remember, if something doesn't fit perfectly, um, you can take it to the tailor and get it adjusted. So you wanna look, if it's not fitting um, in the body, if it's like fully too big, that can be an issue. But if it's something little, the tailor can help adjust you know, a little bit in the shoulder or a little bit in the waist if you need to. And so you don't have to always come out with the perfect suit. You can make those adjustments later. Do we have any other questions, students? Oh, we have one in the chat. Um, what online stores would you recommend to buy inexpensive interview outfits? Um, well, for more expensive, the real, real, but there's some takedown ones like Depop. If you shop around, those online consignment shops can be really great for finding good quality items. Even a lot of vintage uh, resellers will post on Instagram, and so then you can just find them and follow them and, um, and buy directly from them online. But I do know a lot of people that buy from Depop, and they find great stuff. So you talked a little bit too about the importance of having staples and a versatile wardrobe. Um, you know, I, we were talking right before this, I love to buy clothes, but I'm often buying clothes that only make sense with one other piece in my wardrobe. So can you just kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Like when you're buying something, what should you think about when, and when you're, you know, making a purchase? So I have two huge recommendations for that. One is to always go by the rule of three so that everything that you're bringing in, you want to, to be sure that it already goes with at least three other items in your existing wardrobe. That way you know it's already ready to go when you get home, you've got something to match with it. And then the other tip is um, to think about how many wears you're going to get. So I always tell people there's this cost per wearing calculation. It's the math equation that you're never supposed to actually do, but you're always supposed to think about how long is this garment going to last and how many times am I going to be able to wear it? So how much am I actually spending each time that I wear it? And when you put those into perspective, it kind of helps you limit that impulse shopping and um, really make sure that everything you're bringing in is something that's going to last and something that you're going to use. We do have some questions in the chat. Um, what are the most basic staple pieces that everyone should have? Oh, I'm gonna have to send you guys my list. I have a chart that I share with students because it's really quite long. And basically things like, you know, a classic black skirt, a classic white button up shirt, um, the black suit, a great fitting pair of jeans, those kind of, a you know, a denim jacket, just those all purpose staple items that you can mix and match. And then for men, again, jeans and a great button up and a great fitting sweater. Um, I will send it out and then you can share it with everyone. And what I always tell people just to know about the list is if there's something on the list that you are never going to wear, like I have white jeans on there and I am never going to wear white jeans, but it's a list that's made for you to make your own. So if you don't want to wear something, just take it off. It's just a stepping stone. It's just a guide. Yeah, the real, real .com. It's expensive though. You can also look at Thread Up is another one. I believe there's another one that's just open that's even um, local. And so those resellers can be a really great place to find items that are um, great quality, but marked down a lot because they're resell. Also, uh, a friend of mine who is a vintage reseller, she was saying to look in the unknown brands category on those, like on Thread Up. She says that sometimes they just haven't looked up the brand and you'll find stuff that is a brand name. They just put it in the wrong category. So it's a great way to kind of like sneak in the good deals. So, and lastly, if you're local, Last Chance is another one that has um, just amazing, you know, shopping all around for everything. Um, so everyone on the call is in college. Um, maybe they haven't really defined what their personal style is. Do you have any tips on helping them find that? 
this is always a tough one for me because everyone always wants to say, well, what's my personal style? And I like to tell people, you know, don't feel like you have to box yourself in by saying that I am this classic style or I am this feminine style. You should be whoever you are. And that may not fit into a category. What you really want to look at is your lifestyle. Where are you going? What are you doing? What is your job going to look like? If you're going to the gym every day, then probably a portion of your wardrobe needs to be gym clothes. If you are going out, you want clothes that are going to suit that wardrobe. And if you work in an office, you want clothes that are going to match that lifestyle. So think less about having to define who you are and think about the life that you lead. What is it that you do? Um, I also recommend keeping a list of things that you need and keeping a journal of what you wear. So I have like, this is my journal. I keep it next to me on, um, and I write in every day what I wear. And that way I'm like, did I already wear this? Did someone already, you know, <laughs> did I already wear this the last time I was in class? And that way I kind of have a record. And then I also keep a note, you know, I keep writing down that I need um, a new pair of black pants. And so then when I go shopping, I already have that item on the list and I'm going with purpose instead of waiting for that impulse buy. Any other questions? Are there no. questions? Yeah, can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. Um, this one happened to do with uh, um, men's suits. So you talked about earlier about uh, how the or the tie should match the lapel. Mm -hmm. But I always hear this when it comes to suits um, and uh, the lapel. Should the tie match the lapel or should it complement each other? You want the width to, to go together. So if you've got a skinny, a skinny lapel, skinny tie. Those two things need to go together and look okay. cohesive. So, but what about, so like my question, I see bro, my dog's are That's okay. There are some really um, key things about fitting suits. It's good to go to someone the first time you buy a suit so they can help you measure because you need to consider your, um, um, your chest width, you need to consider your arm length. Um, you, there's like, you know, you want exactly like a quarter of an inch sticking out of your shirt where your jacket ends. You want to think about things like the drop when you're buying a men's suit. The drop, if you take your chest measurement across and then your waist measurement, it's the difference between the two. That's how you get that suit to fit in and tuck in at the waist. And for a nicer designer suit, you're kind of looking for like a six or a seven inch drop. More casual suits are going to have um, less of a drop. So when you're first buying a suit, it's good to go to a suit place, even if it's just to figure out what it is that's going to look good and how it's going to fit you and how it should fit. And then it, even if you don't get the suit there, at least you're like, okay, now I know I'm a 35 long or a 43 wide. And then you can take that information and put it into you somewhere else. Okay. But so going right back to it though. So like I said, I see so many broadcasters with people in general wearing suits. I see they wear a red, a red tie and a red pocket square. Yeah. Don't those co are coordinate too much? Should they be like off from each other just a little bit? Should they more complement, not match each other so much? So you're thinking of the pockets where I'm thinking of the lapel. So the yeah. lapel is the part that's coming out. That's the, it's the flip part yes, back yes, in the jacket. Yes. So that is a, it's a different thing. When you're thinking about the pocket square and the tie, I don't know that I would wear a pocket square to an interview. A pocket square to me feels very much like going out fancy occasion. Because it's kind of like versus the interview is much more subdued. Okay. But in relation to those things matching, yes, they should complement each other. It really depends on everything else. You know, what is your, is everything else really subdued? And then you're just popping with those two items. And then how much is it? Are they super bright or are they both kind of tame? So there's just a lot of other factors that go into those two things going together. 
Okay, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? All right, well, thank you so much, Naomi. This was amazing. We appreciate you joining us. Um, everybody, round virtual round of applause. Thank you. Nicole, do you want to talk about our next um, session? Yeah, actually, our next uh, Fine Tune Friday is November 6th. Uh, we're going on a little bit of a break because we have interview days coming up the next two Fridays. Um, the November 6th Fine Tune Friday will be actually led by Becca Smouse. Um, we will be talking about online portfolios, kind of layouts, things to keep in mind. I don't know if, Becca, you might want to elaborate on what you'll touch on. Yeah, we're going to talk online portfolios, you know, what people are looking for, how to make sure you are using a user-friendly interface. Um, we'll talk some technical things, some layouts. Um, so bring your portfolio if you have one, and if you don't have one, we'll talk about how to make one. Yeah. Um, so thank you, everyone, again for joining us. Mike, anything to add? I think we're good, but I uh, just want to uh, personally thank Naomi. Uh, got uh, so much information out of this uh, personally. Uh, what do you think about this uh, this outfit? If you love it, I love it. <laughs> hey, good answer. Good answer. All right. Uh, have a good Friday. Have a good weekend, everyone. And uh, I hope you can join us at 12 noon. We got a uh, Dow Jones News Fund uh, summer internships coming up. You don't have to RSVP. Just pop into this room at 12 noon. Thanks again, Naomi. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Uh, Nicole and Rebecca or, or Michael, I'm going to send you that link right now. Okay. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.